Warning, this content may be offensive, upsetting or disturbing to some audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Cops have read it. What's the creepiest thing you've found during a house search? I used to volunteer with my local PD. Nothing will beat the old lady who passed away in her house and her little dog ate her face. Literally just the skin from the jawline to the hairline, and from ear to ear. It left the eyeballs in the sockets. Just a skeleton in a lady suit, doing the 1000 yard stare. As silly as this sounds, I was clearing a house, with my gun out obviously, and rounded a corner, to see a man pointing a gun right at my face. I yelled and was taking slack out of the trigger, when I realized I was looking at a full length mirror. Took a while to recover from that adrenaline dump. That's a good illustration of how the human mind, can't process an entire scene at one time, and you'll focus on what's important, the barrel of a gun, versus other details, my face and police uniform. My brother is a cop. He told me about this time, when they responded to a workplace accident where a rail yard worker had been crushed between two railcars. The guy had been crushed slash pressed into the ladder of one of the cars. They kept hearing voices coming from the body. Muffled voices but definitely coming from the body. It took them a while, to figure out the worker had been carrying a radio. Needless to say, they were a bit disturbed, until they reached that conclusion. My dad answered a domestic call at an apartment on the 23rd floor. As soon as he walked in he saw blood everywhere. In pools on the floor, spatter on the walls and ceiling, smeared all over everything. He walked further in, to find a woman crumpled on the floor, battered beyond recognition, and the partner is standing in front of an open window. My dad started to talk to the man, to coax him into coming with, and the man immediately turned around, and stepped out the window, falling 70 meters to his death. Tiny quiet southern town. The whole family had been dead for a week. Their teenage daughter's boyfriend whom she met online was visiting from across the country. Stepdad, mother, daughter and her friend all murdered and hacked up by an axe. The mom was a professor at my university a block away, and when she didn't show up, to work for a few days, cops went to the house, and talked to the murderer who gave them some plausible excuse so they left. He stayed in the house for a full week before leaving. The cops went back, when neighbors reported the smell. They caught the guy at the airport about to fly home. A teacher in my little town of 35,000 souls was caught fiddling little boys. In his house, the police found a fully kitted soundproofed abduction room. Luckily still unused. The room was windowless, soundproofed, with fresh air ducts, reinforced lockable door, and was stocked with toys, a TV, a bed and a porta potty, and video surveillance equipment. The room was discovered, when the dude was arrested and convicted of an old fiddling case from a few years back. Brother-in-law is a cop. He told me about a time, when he and his partner were called to do a wellness check on someone with a terminal illness. The family didn't know where he was. So they get to the house, knock and get no response. They entered the house to see, if he had passed away due to his illness. They did not find him there, but what they did find, was a stairway leading down to a basement. In that basement, was a vast number of love toys, ropes, harnesses etc. There was also a stage with a bed on it, and a video camera on a tripod focused on it. He had stumbled upon this guy's fantasy dungeon. The guy ended up being alive, but was visiting someone out of town, and didn't notify any of his family. My very first dead guy had been in his house for almost a week during a very hot July with no AC. Did you know, that your skin will become clear and you can see everything? He popped when the funeral home came to get him. Yes, popped. Some people, they are not bothered by this. Me. No no no. I don't have the stomach. This is the only part of the job that bothers me. Friend of a cop here. He told me about how he and his buddy went to search in an apartment. They looked around, and his buddy finally called him over. A guy was just, in an oven. Dead of course, but in an oven. When the guys tried to pull him out of the oven all the contents and gas of the dead guy fell right out. A few of the guys vomited and gagged. At my grandparents on vacation in Iowa. They live in the middle of nowhere. Couple elderly neighbors in cornfields 4 miles. It was like 2am, 
and I was gonna go have a smoke before bed. Their back porch has a big sliding door. Well I walk into the room with the sliding door, and there's a guy in a creepy mask and his eyes are jet black. He's quietly wiggling the door, trying to open it. The lock is weird and lets the door have like an inch of free play. I got so scared I felt my butthole clench up, and I dropped my sig. Right then the guy freezes and looks right at me. He pauses, then starts frantically shaking the door trying to open it. Like this dude is trying to rip the door off the freaking house. I run over to my grandpa's gun cabinet and grab something. I don't know what was, some old gun. And by the time I whipped around, to point it at him, he was gone. I ran and woke up my grandparents. We all walked around the house with loaded guns for a minute, but the guy was gone. A couple of weeks later simple guy walked out of the cornfield wearing a dress. He stood by the highway for half an hour, then got picked up by some sketchy car. I won't even go in cornfields in broad daylight anymore. My mother used to work for a police department, and I'd hang out there when I'd be homesick from school. This old man used to walk to the gas station on the corner to get a pack of smokes and coffee every day. The gas station attendant called for a wellness check when she realized she hadn't seen him for a couple of weeks in the dead of summer. Cops went, knocked, smelled something, opened the door, walked in, instantly came back out vomiting from the smell. They had to come back later with respirators, trash bags, and snow shovels to clean up the sludge that used to be the old man. Another officer almost quit his first night on the job. A really bad accident, the officer shows up, the one car has no one in it at all. He's looking around, the guy isn't on the ground anywhere. He tried to figure out if maybe the guy walked away, so goes to look inside for some identification. Finds the guy. He hit so hard that he slammed up under and into the dashboard and was just a broken sack of bones stuffed in around the steering column and other parts. Friend is a cop. Wellness check called in. Went in. Smelled horrible and discovered a large dead guy, shirtless, sitting in his front room in a lawn chair watching TV. He had set up an industrial space heater behind his chair, which was on at full blast. Due to the heat, and apparently other factors he had merged through the back of that lawn chair. My aunt is a police dispatcher. Normally she takes calls from the public and has an officer nearby respond. But one day she was asked to work the station's radio because the normal guy was sick. That meant she was acting as the central hub of the police radio network taking calls from officers in the field, and issuing back up to them, that kind of thing. She wound up having to listen to four cops talking back and forth in a panic as two squad cars arrived to check on a reported murder. The person who called was certain that there were multiple killers present. The victim's meat had been cut into one inch cubes, as if their killer was going to fry them up, or make kebabs. The whole corpse had been disassembled like that. Bones cut into neat inch segments, organs removed, separated, organized. She remembers one of the officers panicked and screamed something along the lines of this is OCD movie monster bullshit. I can't remember the exact quote sadly, and I doubt my aunt remembers it herself. She thought they were playing a joke on her until they called for a hazmat crew to get the body. My uncle is a cop and likes to tell the story of the time he showed up to arrest a 15 year old who skipped school to throw rocks through some cars and steal things in them. He gets there and knows the kid. They've gotten him a few times from the school with drugs, one time for having a knife. They knock on the door and his 18 year old brother and 17 year old sister open it. Cops say what they want and they tell them to f off. Cops show they have the warrant for the kid's arrest and that they have to open the door. Get told another time and now the other cop car pulls up and asks what's going on. My uncle said they might have to force their way in and break the chain 18 year old crap head says he's got a gun. About 3 seconds later the door is broken, the 18 years old crap head is taste, 17 years old is screaming for the brother who wanted to book it. He jumps out the window and gets away, for now, brother is thrown in the cop car, 17 year old slaps the one officer, gets the same free ride and bracelets. They call the property manager and get permission to enter the house completely to investigate. The second floor reeks. The worst smell they've ever smelled. They get upstairs and it just gets worse and worse. They open the door and find a long rotten body surrounded by needles and other drugs. They leave and call it in. 
Uncle said later it came out that the grandmother died of an overdose. The mother was in jail for stabbing a UPS guy and the kids never reported the grandmother was dead so they could keep cashing her social security checks. She was dead for about a year. Other than that his best creepy stories were a guy who tortured and killed animals by feeding them to other animals, not a mouse to a snake think more cat to a dog, or wait a large rabbit to a starved snapping turtle. He also nailed several live rodents and cats to a board in the basement, where he would photograph them, and the other is a drug dealer who killed a guy, and tried to put him through a meat grinder and feed his pitbull. I volunteer with local PD, and I go on ride-alongs often. My creepy thing isn't scary so much as freaky, so we get a call about some squatters in a house that's going to be demolished soon. To make room for a freeway, no big deal, kick them out, go on with our business. It's sunset, just starting to get dark. Our car and the other officer arrive at this place and it's all fenced off and looks abandoned. And by abandoned, I mean it looks scary as hell. It was like an old schoolhouse, metal swing set, a friendly scarecrow next to a fence. Some crosses here and there, but it was in a residential neighborhood. On the blocked in windows, people wrote in sharpie all kinds of spooky stuff. This place belongs to us, and just all around weird crap, like even creepier than that. So there was the main house, a garage type thing, and then a cellar. A door leading underground with creaky ass wooden steps. And so if you walk down those, it's concrete and there are windows, but it's a basement. The windows just show dirt. There are beds and stuff, but it looks like it's been abandoned for a long time. It was so scary it's ridiculous. A dead guy, but not just your average dead guy. This guy died on his couch, surrounded by no less than 1500 Miller light cans. Plus, he had no friends or family, none. He was retired, and his electric bill was auto-deducted from his checking account. He died on his couch, and no one realized it for 5 months. When we found him, the top, front really, because he was on his back, was completely skeletonized. But the bottom, or back, against the couch, was still meaty and rotting. The half skeleton was kinda creepy. But it's creepy and sad, that this guy left this world, and it didn't affect anyone. Just gone and forgotten. I was a fresh officer with dreams being a hero. I get dispatched to a call of a family fight. Not wife husband, but brother sister. The female was reporting the male had attacked her. I arrived and located a female and male. The male I knew from prior contacts. I detained him in handcuffs, and quickly smelled the strong odor of pepper spray. I found out, that after the male knocked off the female's weave she pepper sprayed him. I knew there were different types of pepper spray, like gel. I'm walking around the house taking photos for my investigation, and accessing the property damage. I noticed that in his room the odor from the pepper spray was extremely strong, and made my eyes instantly water with a decent amount of stinging sensation. The fumes made it incredibly hard to breath, and left me without the ability to breath at points, requiring that I leave the room to get fresh air. I find a brownish gel substance all over the walls in the shape of handprints. I photograph it, and determine that it was the pepper gel that male suspect was wiping off of his face onto the wall. I found it odd, that it was all over the walls, and covered the room. I though this chick dusted him with the entire can of pepper gel. After some investigation I took the male to jail. I responded to the same house several days, after for an unrelated medical issue. There were more family members at the house and the male was still in custody. I was having a conversation with the family as the hero firefighters were saving the day. I inquired if they had fully cleaned up the pepper spray from the male's room. They gave me a strange look, and told me there was none in there. I told them about the gel, that was on the wall. I then sat there in horror as they explained to me this man had been, for years, coming on his walls, and playing with it, and the gel was in fact old cum and the fumes were the pungent smell of this man's cum room. My god. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, hit like, get subscribed, and tell us which story was the creepiest, in the comment section, and support the original writers with upvotes, links in the description box.